Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. Today I'm going to be trying out a new Australian puzzle brand called Slow Lane Society. Uh, they're based in New South Wales, which is the same state I'm in, but a little bit further away in uh, the city of Newcastle. And I first discovered them on Instagram sometime last year, but they actually sort of started posting and um, showcasing the brand middle of last year, but their first uh, range of puzzles only came out in February. So I decided to try this one, which I just was really attracted to the beautiful design. Um, they've got four out, four puzzles out at the moment. Um, they're all quite different, but they're all sort of fairly modern designs, I guess, and all quite beautiful in their own right. But this one just really caught my eye. So this is a 1000 piece uh, puzzle and it's called Lone Pony by the artist Pony Gold. And yeah, basically just features um, this sort of, yeah, beautiful, I guess, lonely pony out in the middle of the sort of desert. Like it makes me think of the Wild West with the sort of cac cactus plants and the sort of like red dirt and the beautiful starry and moon night. So yeah, there's just a lot of um, patterns and kind of textures and things going on and yeah it's just a really lovely illustration so I thought this would be a fun one to try. Um, so I think in a minute we will do our usual sort of looking at the packaging and unbox it and look at the pieces and then we'll get into puzzling. Okay so let's check out the packaging. So it actually comes in a not quite a square box it's sort of an odd shaped rectangle like a kind of chunky rectangle shape. Um, yeah a bit different to some of the other puzzle boxes that I have, a bit of a different size, um, but it's quite thin and looks, you know, it looks quite nice. But yeah, it's, it's a very glossy finish and it's very, feels very sturdy. Um, so on the front, we've got, I guess you could say most of the image because it's a little bit sort of covered up here at the bottom with the uh, name of the company, Slow Lane Society and the artist, like a sort of collaboration with the little X here. And then it has the name of the puzzle here, which is Lone Pony and 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle written over here. And then each of the sides is actually different. So we've got here Lone Pony and a, a small version of the, I guess, puzzle image here. Um, so Lone Pony is the name of the puzzle. It gets a bit confusing because it's Pony Gold and then Lone Pony. There's a lot of ponies going on here. And then there's a cute little slogan on this side, which says, let's get jiggy with it, which is pretty cute and quite sort of retro font. And then this side has the name of the company, Slow Lane Society, which I think their logo looks quite cool. I like that sort of wavy design. And then here on the bottom, it's just got a pair of eyes, which is cool. And then, um, yeah, just sort of the details, like, you know, the age recommendation, the, the piece uh, number, the sort of, their social socials, I guess. And also the size, which is 50 by 70 centimeters. I'll pop the inches equivalent on the screen. And then on the back, I guess we've got the whole image here. And then um, more of that same info here that was on the bottom side. So, um, you know, socials and size and, you know, that sort of thing. And it actually says, uh, so Slow Lane Society is Australian owned and designed. Um, it's made in China and yeah, and there's also a barcode. So this didn't actually come shrink wrapped, but it does have these little clear stickers on the top and bottom. So let's slice those open, I guess. Sometimes I actually prefer when puzzles come like this. You know, I think obviously shrink wrap is such a waste of plastic. I mean, I guess it's still kind of plastic having these little stickers, but it's probably better than having a whole lot of shrink wrap that's just going to get thrown out. So, all right. So inside the lid's just white, just blank. And then, yep. And these four sides here are just plain purple, which is a really nice purple. I love this sort of lavender kind of violet color. And then it looks kind of exciting in here because we've got a sort of drawstring cloth bag and maybe a poster I think so yeah let's have a look yeah so this is kind of cool it's a, like a little canvasy drawstring bag which 
that's really cool. I like that. A really lovely fabric reusable bag. So yeah, very nice. It kind of actually makes me think of wooden puzzles because like, you know, you have like Wentworth and then even other wooden puzzles I've done kind of come in these drawstring bags, not like a zipper bag. So yeah, that's interesting. But we'll, I can hear all the pieces in there and sound very, sound nice. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then, yeah, so blank inside, except for this lovely reference poster, which looks pretty big. Whew. Yep, okay, that's pretty substantial. So I don't think we're gonna have any problems putting this puzzle together based on this lovely sized reference poster. This is like a definitely a very generous size. Um, yeah, like, so that's good because, you know, um, I guess, I feel like this design, you probably don't need a poster quite this big because the sort of sections of it are fairly clear, but I think, you know, it's nice to have it in there anyway, because maybe the design you are doing is more detailed or something like that. So, you know, or it's just easier to see, or you can stick it on your wall afterwards. So yeah, so that's a really nice inclusion. All right. So let's pop that over there. Let's check out these pieces, I think. Uh oh, here's me struggling to open things again. Seems to be a bit of a running joke in my recent uh, videos. One eternity later. Hooray! <laughs> Finally. Honestly, I think I need to write to these puzzle companies and uh, get them to sort of get me to test the packaging and how easy it is to open first. <laughs> All right, so let's pop these in the box. Well, they, they sound nice if that's, you know, if nothing else. So that's pretty, that's something, I guess. Um, yep, that seems to be all emptied out. All right. Ah, so these are kind of uh, interesting to me. Um, they're a little bit different than like some uh, like puzzle pieces I've been looking at recently. So the main things I'm noticing is they they seem like kind of uh, pretty I guess fairly standard cuts I think like or well, I guess fairly standard puzzle piece shapes for the most part like you've got your your four tab pieces your zero tab pieces sort of your edge pieces what else have we got here we've got other ones hmm actually I'm seeing a lot of four for uh, four tab pieces. Hmm, okay, actually that is interesting. Maybe we don't have any other like piece variations. Maybe it is just, I'm just seeing a whole bunch of like four tabs and the pieces that have like, I guess four inserts, like zero tabs. So, um, hmm, okay, that is pretty weird. Like, well, for me, I haven't really, I don't think I've really seen that before. I was expecting that there might be more variation like you know your three tabs and your two tabs and stuff but yeah it really does seem like it's just edge pieces zero tabs or four tabs so i don't think i've seen that before the other thing i was going to say is i feel like these pieces are maybe a little some of them feel a little bit smaller than maybe like a ravensburger or a cloudberries or something like that like especially these zero tab ones they feel kind of a little bit tiny um, then, but then I guess the, the four tab ones feel kind of more a regular size. So yeah, sort of interesting. And then the other thing is they seem very, they have a very square look about them as well. So yeah, it's sort of hard to explain. Like they're not very, they're like, yeah, they're quite, have quite a squareness about them. It's, that's the best way I can describe it. I'll definitely include some footage or photos trying to sort of show what I'm talking about. Um, so let's have a look at sort of, I guess, a individual piece anyway. So um, the back is actually, it does seem to have that sort of white paper backing. So that's not my favorite type of puzzle piece. Like you've, if you've watched any of my other sort of review videos before, I always go on about how I like the sort of plain cardboard back like, because I tend to find uh, sometimes even from the start or over time 
this sort of paper backing can peel off or get damaged. Um, I haven't seen any damaged pieces so far, which is good. Like everything looks very neat and like not at all damaged. Like it looks, looks like everything has survived so far. But yeah, that's interesting. Like it's got that yeah, white paper backing. And then thickness is like, it's definitely thinner than some other puzzle brands. Like I would say like Ravensburger and Grateful House and uh, Cloudberries and that, they're all a bit thicker than this. This is definitely thinner, but it oh, the tabs feel a little bendy. Like you can, I feel like if they got caught or you, were a bit rough, maybe you could end up bending the tabs a little bit like, but the, the rest of the piece seems fairly sturdy, but yeah, the tabs, I can feel them bend a little bit if I apply enough pressure. Um, so maybe something to watch out for again, like I said, I haven't seen any damaged pieces. I haven't seen any bent tabs or anything, but I guess something to just keep an eye out for. It's, it's possible that could sort of occur. And then the top side is a very smooth kind of glossy feel. It kind of feels like it's, um, I guess, like glossy paper or cardboard almost stuck on, which maybe it is. Like, it might, I guess it's layers of cardboard with the paper on the back, but this sort of very glossy, feels sort of very glossy cardboardy papery on the top. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be fairly shiny, I guess. Like, so I don't know how um, much trouble it's going to cause me with you know, in terms of like sheen and glare from my lights. Um, it seems like in the box, when I look at the pieces, not too many seem to be picking up much uh, glare, to be honest. Like I can see the colors pretty well on all the pieces. So maybe it won't be that much of an issue. So, I mean, I guess one way to find out when we start puzzling. Um, and yeah, and speaking of the colors, actually, they do seem to be quite, um, I guess crisp and like the printing is quite crisp and the colors as far as I can tell look like they match the picture on the box so yeah and the printing looks pretty clear so yeah um I think that's pretty much all I've got to say about the pieces like they're yeah they're definitely a bit different to any puzzles I've done recently um they might actually be different to all puzzles I have I don't think like I said I don't think I've sort of seen this piece set up where you've got four just four tabs and then zero tabs like that's quite different and quite interesting um i do have my concerns though because um i have seen some other people's experience with this puzzle where they did mention they had some issues with false fits especially in some of the more sort of solid areas solid colored areas of the puzzle um, i'm going to try not to be too influenced by that and just sort of focus on my own experience with the puzzle um, but you know it, the fact that we only really have two sort of piece shape variations does um, mean that that could end up being an issue because that's sort of the same problem I have with the Cloudberries piece cut I get a lot of false fits with their pieces because of the sort of lack of piece shape variation so yeah we'll just have to sort of see if that's going to be an issue or not but I am definitely excited to put this puzzle together. It's such a beautiful image and, you know, the colors look lovely and yeah. And it, you know, it's just always exciting to try a new brand and different piece style. So I think in a sec, we should get into some puzzling. So one thing I forgot to mention just before is puzzle dust and, or in this case, the, uh, lack of puzzle dust, which is really good. So uh, when I emptied all the pieces out of the fabric drawstring bag, there wasn't very much dust in that at all. And also like among the pieces here, I can't really see any puzzle dust. And even when I like dig to the bottom, yeah, I really can't see any. So, oh, there's a teeny weeny bit, I think, but it's, yeah, it's so minimal. So yeah, that makes me really happy. I think it even said somewhere about there being zero puzzle dust, or maybe I read that on the website. So uh, if that's, if it said that, it seems to be true. So yeah. Um, so now that we've met, that I've mentioned that, let's talk about how I'm gonna approach this puzzle. So let's swap these over. Um, so 
it could do the border first, but I don't know. I've, lately I've actually been enjoying doing puzzles by just working on sections and then sort of filling in the border like as I come across border pieces. Um, so I might, I'm actually tempted to do that again with this puzzle. Um, so I think what I might do is, yeah, sort by sort of pattern and color. There's a, quite a lot of detail here, so I think there's going to be a lot of pieces that have a bit of crossover where it's, you know, got, uh, you know, multiple colors on it, not just like one section's color, that sort of thing. Um, but what I'm thinking is I might try and find these all these green stripey pieces because, I, I don't know, they kind of look satisfying to do. And then I might even try and find and put in like a separate pile these other sort of green cacti pieces. And then I'm not too sure where to go from there, whether I pick out flowers or maybe the moon or something, um, or the horse. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. I sort of feel like it's just gonna end up being a bit intuitive and just sort of uh, see what ends up feeling right as I put it together. So that being said, let's uh, pop that over there. I've got these big trays again, which I used, I think in my last video, these are actually from Grateful House and they've actually been really useful. They're, they're massive. They come in like, I think a set of eight or something and they're pretty huge. Um, but I found them really useful the last time I used them just to like, really like be able to spread the pieces out. Like this box to be fair, isn't too bad. And you could use the lid as well to put pieces in, but I kind of like how shallow these are. So yeah, I think I'm going to, tip at least part of the contents into these. I just feel like, yeah, I was really able to sort of shuffle through the pieces quite uh, nicely last time. I think I'm going to actually not use the poster for now. Um, I feel like it's fairly big and, but for this puzzle, I feel like I can see the detail well enough on well both sides of the box. So yeah, I don't think I really need the poster. I can always get it out later if I feel I need it. Um, I also apologize if you can hear that noise. It seems to be a uh, airplane day today where all the Aeroplanes are going over this particular direction. Must be a uh, good uh, weather and wind and all that for them, I guess. I don't know, but I think it's very rude of them to uh, come overhead while I'm trying to record a video. So yeah, I'm just gonna pull out like lots of these stripey ones. I'm hoping that, yeah, with this, I mean, I think this tries to be tricky, but at the same time, I should be able to match up the pieces reasonably well. Like it'll help me. Like if I am worried about false fits, it, it should help in that, like you'll be able to match the lines up. So yeah, I think that's gonna be handy. Um, so I'm kind of, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> I, I haven't been able to sort of figure out yet if I think this puzzle is gonna be hard or easy. Maybe it's gonna be a bit of a mix, I suspect. Like maybe some parts will prove easier than others, which I guess is the case for any puzzle really. But yeah, overall, I, I don't know. I have no idea how long this is gonna take me. Um, but um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to do it. I just think it's a really nice image. So yeah, I'll definitely keep making a giant pile of these but maybe let's try and get some of the other green ones out. Some of them are getting a little bit wedged together, but that's pretty normal. Some puzzles, uh, some puzzle brands I seem to find it happens more than others. Um, I don't know, I guess it's just the cut of the puzzle pieces. Um, yeah. Oh. 
So yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep going through all these green pieces. I think I'm also probably gonna eventually flip, like go through both trays of pieces and flip them all to the correct side as well. Um, I don't know, I just like doing that because it means I then don't really miss any pieces, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna continue on doing this and then you'll see me start putting the puzzle together.
So I'm back after a long time of puzzling. Believe it or not, just getting to this section has taken like about nine hours of puzzling and I'm just as shocked as you are. I don't know how well I have and I have a suspicion how it's taken this long, but yeah, I'm quite shocked and surprised that, you know, this fairly, I guess, unassuming image has taken this long to put together. Um, it's not supposed to be a challenge puzzle. It's supposed to just be an ordinary 1000 piece puzzle, but yeah, it's just taken me so long to do. So I'm going to get into why that is in a minute, but let's first talk about the pros of the puzzling experience so far before we get into um, a bit of a rant. So pros are obviously the images looking really beautiful. I really love the colors and I love the sort of line work and yeah, just the art style is really pretty. I really like it. And the feel of the pieces, like the, the thickness is quite nice. Like I haven't come across any damaged pieces at all. Like very happy with the like, I guess, quality of them. Like it, it, despite the sort of paper backing, um, I haven't found any like, uh, you know, split layers or the paper coming off or anything like that. Like all the pieces seem to be very uh, nice and intact. And yeah, the thickness is nice and they sort of click together nicely. Um, and even, uh, even though they are like have a glossy finish, I haven't found that to be sort of any worse than any other kind of glossy puzzle really. So I think in the time lapse there was like a bit of a like sheen or glossy section there and I can see a bit here, but overall it hasn't impacted my puzzling too much. Um, so it hasn't, yeah, it hasn't posed that much of a problem. So that's been fine. And then the other thing, which is a bit interesting is, yes, it's pretty much a uh, puzzle dust free. You could say like, I can see a few specks, but it's very like there's very minimal puzzle dust and you do get sort of dusty fingers after working on it for a while. Um, but I have actually found myself sort of blowing my nose a lot, TMI, while puzzling and I can't, work out if it's the really fine puzzle dust or if it's just my sinuses, like I do get allergies, so it could just be that. So I'm not too sure. Um, so I, I can't really say one way or another if the puzzle dust is problematic, but I guess in terms of, you know, uh, there being lots of dust and like chunks of dust everywhere, it's definitely not like that at all. Like it's, it's a, my puzzle board's looking very clean and neat. So yeah, so happy about it. Uh, in, I guess, in that way. So let's get into the problems with this puzzle. Um, basically, there have been just so many false fits. I like this is probably one of the worst puzzles in terms of false fits that I've like ever worked on. Um, yeah, just having only two variations of pieces, except the border, it's just been really, really difficult and just so problematic. Basically, like I thought, okay, yeah, maybe there'll be false fits in some of these like, like sort of single or single colored areas. And there were, and that took me a while to figure out, like, well, I think it's correct. I don't know, but at least get them to fit. But then I've had so many false fits all in these sort of green areas and flower areas down here. Like even though there there's like distinct like images and patterns going on. I have had so many false fits. Like there's been pieces that, you know, where two bits of pattern look like they go together. And, and it's not until you look really closely that you realize that they don't, or until you realize there's another piece that can actually go there and that kind of looks a bit better. And, but there's been so many times where because of that, I've had like, you know, little sections made up of puzzle pieces that I thought were correct and I couldn't get any other puzzle pieces to fit of my remaining pieces. So I was like, what, what's going on here? Like there's no more green elsewhere. And then I'd realize, oh, like these sections are all wrong. Like things are around the wrong way. And you know, like multiple pieces can fit in the same spot. And it really has been a nightmare <laughs> to be honest. Like, and yeah, I think that's a major factor as to why it's taken me this long to put this puzzle together. I've just spent so long 
like trying to get pieces to fit in certain areas and undoing bits and redoing sections and yeah it's been a real nightmare so uh yeah not a great puzzling experience so far um yeah and i i think the other reason why i've been a bit slow with this puzzle as well which is not the puzzle's fault is that i think one i've been a bit tired while doing this so maybe i haven't been as focused and sharp as i could be while putting this together and two for some reason i thought it would be a great idea to do the green areas first which of course are like the most uh the areas with the most amount of pieces so maybe it would have been easier to do like the flowers or the moon or the horse first or something like that i mean you probably saw in the time lapse that i even ended up deciding to do the border part way through just because i felt like i was lacking a bit of sort of structure i felt like putting the border in would help me figure out where some of these green bits go um, and I even gave up at one sec at one point and like started working on the moon. So yeah, so it's been a pretty frustrating and time consuming, long and arduous journey of getting to this point. Um, I guess the only other thing to say about the puzzle pieces, which uh, it's not, ex it's a, it's a minor con, I guess, is uh, like the pieces are sort of 50, 50 as, like as to whether they're going to hold together or not like this looks okay but then you know you can pick up sections and like they'll you know fall apart pretty easily um so some pieces seem to like hold together or are quite snug and then others seem a bit loose so it's a bit of a inconsistent sort of fit amongst the pieces unfortunately so yeah sometimes you can sort of lift up sections and move them around and other times they'll just fall apart on you so uh, yeah so I'm not too too bothered like it's been good enough I guess like I mean I've been just way more focused and frustrated by the false fits to be honest anyway uh, now that I've come to the end of that rant I think it's time I get back into this and try and finish it off I have no idea how long it's going to take I've only got here these two trays which look pretty like they don't look like there's a lot of pieces they look pretty straightforward and like it shouldn't take too long but i have my suspicions that it might take quite a while just based on past experience so yeah i'm a little apprehensive that there's going to be a lot more false fits to deal with especially with like all the line works going on in the flowers and and all these like stars and stuff and and even the horse so yeah we'll see what happens um, so I guess wish me luck and I'll hopefully be able to finish this off in just one more session and then we'll come back with some final thoughts. So I'm back and I finally finished this puzzle. Um, surprisingly, that last session of puzzling was actually quite quick and it only took about an hour and 15 minutes. So all up from the start, including sorting to endpoint, uh, the puzzle took about 10 hours and 15 minutes. So to me, that's still a pretty long time for, you know, what isn't a like terribly complicated image. It's not a challenge puzzle. It's not meant to be. So yeah i still think it took a long time and that was mainly due to false fits i would say um 
But despite that, I really love how it looks. Um, I think it just looks, it's just a beautiful image and you know, the line work and all these stars and yeah, the, yeah, the image is just beautiful. So I can't deny that. So yeah, definitely happy with how it looks. Really love it. Um, so I think we only recently sort of just went over pros and cons. So I'm not going to go into that in great depth. Um, basically, it's a beautiful image. Yeah, love the artwork, nothing wrong with that. And I actually really love the packaging and the reusable uh, drawstring bag and the poster. Like there's definitely a lot of good things going for this puzzle, but I feel that unfortunately they're sort of overshadowed by the big con, which is the false fits. I think that the false fits just really took away any enjoyment and you know relaxation that you would normally find in a puzzling experience it just really took that away and just made everything really frustrating and slow going and just not that much fun really so yeah it's a bit disappointing um, I was really hoping to have a really fun puzzling experience with this uh, especially to match the you know fun beautiful artwork but yeah that just wasn't the case so let's quickly talk price. Um, so I purchased this in Australia for uh, $59.95, so pretty much $60. Um, I'll pop the equivalent in US on the screen. Um, and in Australia, that is pretty a pretty high-end price. That's definitely like sort of like top of puzzle prices in Australia. Um, and I do have other puzzles in my collection that are about that price um, but I'd have to say that most of those are you know just much nicer in terms of like piece fit and I don't have the same problem with false fits with those as I did with this so I kind of feel like you're getting a lot more for some of the other $60 puzzles that I have in my collection than this um, so I guess the question is would I recommend this Sadly, no. Um, unfortunately, even if the price, like, even if the price was lower, I just still don't think I could recommend it. Just mainly because of, you know, the false fits. They just detract. I feel like they just detract from the puzzling experience so much that it just doesn't matter what the price is. I just don't think it's a fun or enjoyable puzzling experience at all. So yeah, it does really sadden me to say that because I really would like to be able to support. You know a local Australian brand and especially one that's obviously trying to make a really nice quality product um, but yeah I think they just really unfortunately missed the mark in that area however that being said I did sort of see some comments online where the company Slow Lane Society was responding to someone else who had a I guess not pleasant experience doing this particular puzzle and they actually said that the cut of these pieces was not actually what they intended and they themselves were a bit disappointed um, but that they said going forward um, I'm not sure if they mean a new series of, of puzzles or reprints of these particular designs um, either way they said that those ones will have uh, like a different piece cut and like more variation and shouldn't suffer from the same problem as this piece variation so yeah, so that is some promising news and I hope that they're able to do that because, you know, if I can, I'd really love to try and support them, especially in the future if, yeah, if they can make a beautiful and really good quality product in the future, I'm definitely excited for that. And yeah, so fingers crossed and I hope they're able to achieve that because I'd love to support them if I can. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this puzzle, uh, you know, have you experienced false fits in other puzzles or do you think you'd be able to put up with them or is it a complete deal breaker for you? So yeah, in the comments below, let me know your thoughts and experience on that. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore juby. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye. So maybe our puzzling experience wasn't the best, but let's turn things around and have fun doing a puzzle pickup. Ta-da!